Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends, welcome back to the channel, and today I have something... I don't, want, I don't know what to call it. It's I had a realization this week, you know. I was, you know, seeing the videos I had done on Hogwarts Legacy and going through YouTube and, you know, seeing the recommendeds and whatnot. And I came to the realization that I had been forgetting to theorize in my last at least two videos on it about perhaps one of the most important and defining character defining features of this game which is as you see by the title the sorting ceremony yes in both the character and the story speculations i forgot to mention the sorting ceremony i mean i'm sure i must have mentioned it and i and i mentioned the house choice but the ceremony itself i did not and i want to do it and i will do it now now this is not going to be a massive speculation or anything of the sort uh, says he very optimistically i hope this video is a bit shorter than normal it, again says he optimistically, but I will do try it. Now, the sorting ceremony. The thing we've all wished happened to us at 11 years old. Except it never did, never will, and not even with the character, because if we are to go with the 50th student character, yeah, you'll be much older than that. But my point is, how will the actual ceremony work out? Now, we know that in law, the hat sort of chooses, but also sort of allows the person to choose. That's why Harry ended up in Gryffindor, because the hat sought fitful to put him in any house, to sort him in any house, and was having doubts. And it was Harry's wishes not to go to Slytherin that landed him in anything but Slytherin. He landed in Gryffindor, but let's say he could have landed anywhere. Maybe except Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw's for Hermione. Harry... It was either Gryffindor or Hufflepuff for Harry. But let's be honest, Ravenclaw, maybe not the best suit for him. Anyway, now, how can this situation, the, the choice, the, the, the player choice, be translated into the sorting ceremony? Now, I believe, and I think that it would be a really, really cool sort of sorting ceremony, is if there's both an element of randomness and the ability to play a choice. Now, we know that a lot of us are going to go into this game, at least for the first time, we are going to go into this game and we already know which house we're going to decide. We all have our favorite house out from the get-go. For instance, I know that in my first playthrough, I will most likely be choosing, if indeed we have the choice, which I believe we will have, I will be choosing Hufflepuff, because it's my house of the heart. I have a keychain with the house symbol that it's too precious to use on my key, so it's safely stored on one of my on one of my shelves, like, neatly perfect there, and so yeah, a lot of people will most likely choose Gryffindor or Ravenclaw or Slytherin, whoever, whichever house they see fit to them. Now, but is it enough to have the sorting ceremony be just a player choice? Just, you, you get there, you sit there, you get the hat on your head, and you have in a small menu with the four houses and you say, I want this one. It's most likely how it will play out like this, like you just get the choice pretty straightforward. But I thought of a possibility to make it a little bit more intriguing, more enticing, let's say. Now, I defended on the story speculation video 
that I believe that we will have a prologue section in Diane Alley. Now, this makes sense to me because no matter if we're starting as a first year student or a fifth year student, we will need supplies. Especially if the student, if the player character knows nothing of the wizarding world, we'll need a wand, we'll need the books, we'll need the clothes, we'll need everything. So we will have to go to Diagon Alley. My idea is that during the prologue in Diagon Alley, certain dialogue choices will add up to specific counters. Now, I know, and you might be thinking this, boiling the houses down to a specific characteristic is not very good. The main story thought is that, that not all Slytherins are bad and not all Gryffindors are good. We know that. And I'm not trying to make the division in between the good and bad, and, you know. I'm going for the, cr the core values, like Slytherins are normally ambitious, Ravenclaw are normally academic, more academic focuses, Hufflepuff um, more friendly, a more friendly nature. The Gryffindors are bold and courageous and whatnot. Those are the type of core values I believe could be uh, evaluated through the dialogue choices. Now, you'll be thrown around into a myriad of situations. Not, not too long, the problem. No more than an hour, really. No more than an hour. Just going on diagonally, doing your business, going to Green Dots, if you have an account in Green Dots, that is going to all the vendors, getting the books, getting everything, and just encountering some characters. Some of them you might meet later, others may not. Maybe you find, like, a dark wizard or a witch getting out of Nocturne Alley, and you bump into them, and then you have some sort of interaction with them that dictates sort of how you view the world and how you would respond to that character, and each choice will correspond to one of the houses. That way, when we eventually get to Hogwarts and the sorting ceremony, we would be presented with a sort of statistical analysis on which house we, are, we were more inclined towards with our choices. Our choices would carve the character's personality and the hat would reflect that. Of course, we would always get the option to choose. That is a guarantee. We would always get the option to choose. But let's say I wanted to choose Hufflepuff. But during this prologue, this hypothetical prologue, my dialogue choices somehow amounted more to, let's say, Ravenclaw. Let's say the statistical analysis goes like, so you went, and I'm going to exaggerate this, I'm, I'm not saying I want the game to be like 60% Ravenclaw, 40% uh, Gryffindor, 20 Hufflepuff or something, I'm not saying that, but, you know, maybe just something in a dialogue, really something, maybe a thought, you were more inclined to this, do you want the hat to, to put you here, do you want to choose, do you want to be surprised, so yeah. And imagine something, maybe imagine a circle, you know, and with four, divided in four parts, each with one of the house colors. And whichever color shines the brightest is the one you have the most affinity for, based on the choices we did in the hypothetical prologue. And then what you could do is you could go with that go with your choices and follow the choices. So even if you had an idea to follow another house, you will follow the choice that you carved for yourself. You can choose the one you desire. So even if the choice points you to Slytherin, you can still choose Gryffindor or any other, but you get my feeling. You, you can choose any of the other three. Or I thought this option could be a bit funny. Just let the hat decide. And basically, you have a one out of four chance to go into any of the houses. And this uh, random chance would not necessarily take into consideration 
the, the dialogue choices. So you see, this is a bit confusing, but believe me, it all makes sense in my head. So three choices. You go with what your choices dictated in the prologue, even if that choice goes against what you thought, but you can still choose that. It's not mandatory to choose that. You go with the choice you always wanted. So you just go, no, I want this house. Or you let the hat decide. And in that sense, you have a normal choice because normally the hat decides, even if it takes into consideration the student's choice. But most students... So yeah, uh, sorry about that. I There was a delivery here for the house and... Yeah, the, the bloody package is damaged, but, uh, but and anyway, I'm not going to, to go on that now. So I left off on the three points, just a summary of the three points, and I'm not going to take any more of your time. So going back a bit, the three points, you choose the house that the system advises, taking into consideration the choices we made throughout the prologue. Option two, we choose the house we so ever desire with no ties to whatever choices we made. Those are, those are still valid, but they do not impact the house we choose. Or option number three, let the head decide, which is, after all, the normal choice because most students do not know that you can actually influence the house you choose. Most students just go and say, okay, the hat will decide for me. Other students know at face value what house they'll go in. Normally pure blood families know that they are most likely going to land in Slytherin. All the Weasleys probably knew after maybe, maybe after Charlie or maybe after Percy. They knew, well, we're all landing there in Griffin or so. Let's not even bother about it. So, and yeah, these are the three choices I think we will be able to make when it comes to select our house in Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I don't know why it took me so long to make a video on the sorting ceremony, but here it is. This is my take on the sorting ceremony for the game Hogwarts Legacy. Now, if you're interested in hearing more about it, please do let me know in the comment section down below. I have been enjoying and really thriving on the support that these videos have been having. The comments, the likes, the subscribers, we are nearly, nearly is the keyword here, 60. We are one short last time I checked. So please, you there, you could be number 60. Or whichever number after that it comes, you could be it. So please, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd want to see more, please leave a like, a comment, and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile, subscribe to the channel for more. I had a presentation earlier on a Zoom class, so I am still not catched on my bread fully, but I will see you guys next time with whichever topic it is. It's spellcasting. I said spellcasting was next, but then I remembered this. So yeah, the next video I'll make sure it's spellcasting, but I'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic weekend and bye-bye. Less than 15 minutes, yeah.